Go dogs, man. Um, winning. Winning is important. We found a way to win a football game against a good Fort Valley State uh, football team. You know, our guys, you know, through it all found a way. And uh, you know, I was very, very proud of our defense. They really held a really good offense uh, to out of the end zone. And, you know, you can do that. And you look at the team we played, um, you know, they had scored like 40-plus points for their six games. And and holding them out of the end zone was kudos to our defense staff. I thought our special teams was much better. Uh, we put an emphasis of it during the off week. You know, we did a really good job of, uh, of flipping the field as well as um, getting points on the board and doing some good things in our kick units. And then, you know, wasn't pleased with how we play offensively. I mean, you know, we're a better football team than how we played offensively. But all in all, we achieved the victory. I mean, uh, the mission, what we always try to talk about every week, is our mission is to go 1-0. and All right, Coach. Uh... Talk about talk about Anaj, uh, Anaj Fox the play. Uh, you guys got his name called Quick Trick. I guess you could, could show that on some Saturday night. Oh yeah, he, he Anaj Carter, man, he's special talent. I mean, when we recruited him, he knew that he was gifted and talented. And now that you know, we got him rolling. We got Caden High rolling, and Justin Smith Brown. You see, we got some explosive guys out there wide receiver. But you know, I, I was excited for Anaj, man. Anaj is a guy that can, you know, be explosive in the kick game which he showed the ability to do that as well. And he has explosive ability at wide receiver. So we really, really like our wide receiver core. And with those three guys, man, pick your poison, man, because all three of them can go. So we're grateful to have them all. Just talk a little about that, Coach. Caden kind of little was a, a big factor Saturday, especially in the first half. I know he had a couple of runs there in the second half. But um, are guys just starting to key – Defense are starting to key on him a little bit more? Well, he didn't play the first quarter. Oh, okay. Uh, it was really something that I did because of something that he did. So, Caden's <laughs> uh, our guy, man. We're going to find a way to get Caden the ball. Uh, we just weren't in sync. You know, it's not that we didn't try to get him the ball. You saw we threw two deep balls to him. And he was open, but we didn't hit him on either one of them. So, you know, we're going to find ways to get Caden out of the football. So, you know, he, he just uh, didn't play the whole first quarter. We didn't put him in until the second quarter. And, uh, but he learned his lesson. He's growing from it. He's a talented young man. But, you know, we always start and do everything with discipline. So he understands. And he and I got a relationship. We, we've been together before. Uh, and I truly believe in him. And, uh, but all in all, Caden Howell touched the football in this offense. Definitely. Let's talk a little bit about, about the offense. Going back and watching the game again, seeing things, what did you see a second time around with your offense that you can maybe pinpoint and say, okay, these are the things we need to work on? Well, it's not necessarily what we need to work on because we've been we've been efficient all season. It, it just it came down to you know, and I say all the time, in order for us to be good on offense, we got to be good at quarterback and offensive line, and those were two positions we didn't play very well in. <laughs> you know, it's not really you know because they've been playing well all year, but they just didn't play well this past game, and it, it, it happens that way. That's why you call it a team. And I told our football team, we'll never, as long as I'm the head football coach, and we'll never you know, point to a certain segment or point to a side of the ball because it's all about the team. Together, everyone achieves more. Sometimes, man, I was telling them, uh, I was educating our guys about the steel curtain, man. You know, steel curtain defense. Sometimes back in the day, man, it used to be seven, six finals. At the end of the day, if, you, if you're playing good defense, sometimes it'd be that way. But sometimes there's scores where there's 53 to 58, you know, high scoring games. You know, we're going to do whatever it takes to win the football game. Sometimes the defense might have to carry the offense. Offense might have to carry the defense. Special teams has to be special. So, you know, all in all, I thought our defense and special teams played well. We just didn't have a great day offensively uh, this past Saturday. But we'll get it rolling. We, we had a great practice last night. Uh, we've been good pretty much all year on offense. Uh, we've been moving the ball on everybody. We just had a slow start, and we really could never get in sync this past week. You talk about, I mentioned this in your post-game press conference, but uh, seeing things in practice, seeing how they work, just not being able to carry it over onto the field. Where are those breakdowns coming from? Well, I mean, it's, 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 you know, I think it comes from, you know, guys just understanding the urgency of now. You know, it wasn't the fact that we didn't have a good scheme this past week. It was just the urgency. You know, I talk about winning the effort battle, man. You know, the effort has nothing to do with talent. And, and, and the reality is on one side of the ball, again, I won't talk about the team because it wasn't about the team. The other sides of the ball played well. One side of the ball didn't have the urgency. They didn't win the effort battle. And it came down to effort. It wasn't scheme. We had hats for hats. It's just offensively we didn't play hard. Just put it that way. 
And it always comes back on me because as the head football coach, I got to make sure that the whole team understands the urgency. And now we just didn't play an amazing effort on the offensive side of the ball. This defense, I mean, was really getting after the quarterback Saturday. Just talk a little bit about um, their continuous improvement, especially, you know, getting pressure on, on QB. I mean, our, our defense is doing what South Carolina State has always been known for, playing good defense. Um, they're playing well. I mean, honestly, to really look at it, they, they're doing a good job up front. It starts with up front. But our, our, our um, defensive player of the game this past week, voted on from the coach staff, was our secondary. You know, yes, the defensive line gets a lot of attention because they get home and they stop the run. But our secondary has to be in sync. And I thought our secondary played really, really well. They have been giving up, you know, some yards in the passing game. But they really buckled down and held a good explosive offense down. I mean, really, really nothing. So. You know, I was I was very very proud of our secondary and those guys are bonding together at the right time. For me, it's about timing. You know, as we get into MIAC play, we want to be hitting on all cylinders. And uh, you know, our D line had been playing well all year. Our front seven with our D line and linebacker. You know, we just needed more consistency out of our secondary, and they've been playing well as well, but just in pieces. Secondary for us is like the offensive line because there's five of them. We have we have a five. Uh, we're four two five defense. It's five of them. Two can be playing great, but if the other two or three not playing well, then it doesn't make the whole unit be cohesive. It's the same thing with offensive line. You know, our left guard and left tackle may be playing great. If our center right guard right tackle not playing great, then it makes the whole group look bad. So all in all, it's a 4 2 5 structure defensively, and uh, we're doing a good job of coming together uh, at the right time. And I think the time is right now. Kayvon Tillian, just a freshman, two sacks this past weekend. Just talk a little bit about what he's been able to do coming in as a freshman and playing at this high of a level. Man, listen, Kayvon Chisholm is the real deal. I mean, he's got, honestly, ability to play a lot more football longer than any of us uh, play. To be honest, man, he's that kind of talented kid. And we've been knowing he's been doing it in practice all camp. We were just kind of holding on to him a little bit, but we won't hold on any longer because you see when we put him in, he's explosive. I mean, we signed him as a defensive end from Hampton County. But he's eating his way into a D tackle. So he's going to be that same speed. He's 285 pounds now with the same speed he had at defense end. Have you ever watched him play basketball? I mean, he dunks a basketball like a, like a, like a small forward in basketball. I mean, he's, a, he's talented. I mean, Kayvon Chisholm is special. He really, really is. And you know, we have to be smart on how we play him for the rest of the season. But uh, he'll, he'll have a bright future. And Garner in blue, no question about it. And just talk a little bit about Delaware State. Now, what do they present to you guys this week? It's me at time, man. You know, so it's go time. You know, it's been a one and old philosophy for us the whole entire season, right? But it really, really means something now, you know. And uh, and when you look at Dale State, man, you know they're a well coached football team. Lee Hall does a good job with those guys. Lee Hall's been around for a long time. He knows his conference. And uh, they have a running back that can really make it happen. He's leading the league in rushing. He's averaging like 6.3 yards per carry. I mean, a guy that can really make it happen. And they have a dual threat quarterback that's talented with his legs as well as with his arms. So, you know, and then I, I tell you what, defensively, they have some guys up front with their D-line that does a really, really good job. So it'll be a definite challenge for us if they're coming into Oliver C. Dawson Stadium, Willie Jeffries Field. I want to make sure I, I always tag that along make sure that uh, we're ready to go. And again, for us, the biggest thing is, Travis, we, we have to make sure that we eliminate all distractions. When you're talking about a game like homecoming, man, you know, the excitement that's going on around here with the fan base and what we're doing and, and how we're getting this thing rock and rolling, it, it'll be a lot of people out there. And, um, and with them being a hot lot of